What's up, everyone? Aaron here, and today I'm taking a look at New Ages, H25, Herbie, and H26, Vanishing Point. Obviously, this is their much-anticipated uh, update for Bumblebee, and their first take on Cliff Jumper. So, these guys came in vehicle mode, so I'm going to start out and take a look at them in vehicle mode. But first, we'll take a look at the accessories, and obviously we'll revisit the necessary accessories for robot mode as well when we get to that. So, here's the box they come in. It's your standard New Age Fair, extremely nostalgic with the G1. Uh, this looks like one of their artists just straight up redrew the uh, G1 box art for these guys, basically. So, uh, you've got product shots of Herbie there. You've got product shots of Cliff Jumper. We've got Cliff Jumper sniping at Megatron on the back. So there's your box. As is part of the course, you're going to get instructions. Now, they each have their own specific set of accessories. So we'll start with Bumblebee. And let's just start out here with his... Teeny tiny little pistol. There we go. And it's tiny. A little bit of molded detail, but just in cast gray plastic. And it looks very similar to the one he used sometimes in the cartoon. So, looks good. You also get a jet pack. It is painted silver here. And... It is molded to look like the jetpack he used in the Dinobot Island episodes. So, looks pretty good as far as that goes. With lots of nice sculpted detail on here. He may have used it in a few more episodes. I don't remember off the top of my head. You get an alternate back cover piece for him here. And how this works is... He actually comes with both of them off in the package, but you just pull it off of the tab here. There's a tab on the inside of both of these. And you just tab it in there, and that's how the jet pack works as well. But just so you can see how that works, there you go. So if you would prefer to have that look, you can always have that. Or if you want to switch it out for robot mode, if that's what you want to do, you can do that. But I like to just leave the spare tire look on there. And I'll probably just maybe paint it eventually too. So that's cool. But options are always good. And that's Bumblebee's accessories. So Cliff Jumper is going to come with his iconic. I never really know if this is supposed to be like a bazooka or just a big sniper rifle type weapon. But he's got the little stand here. It's on a separate piece on the end of the barrel. But it looks pretty much exactly like the one he used to try and shoot at Megatron on the back of the box and in the very first episode of the cartoon. So, sorry to get my ugly hand out of the way, guys. So, very good. I love this. This is honestly maybe my favorite piece of all the accessories. And because, you know, New Age loves their gimmicks, you're going to get jet skis. Or Hydro Foils, as the uh, TF Wiki calls them. I learned that when I was making sure I, I kind of knew what I was talking about some in this episode. And apparently that's the official term. But they're pretty cool. There's some nice little sculpted detail on them. They are, I'm pretty sure this is paint on them. So, very good. And then obviously you've got the magnet there in the center. And you're going to get... Four of these. And they actually come still attached on this sprue. So I just uh, get some nippers out of the toolbox. Or if you build model kits or something, you just do that number. And... 
magnets, guys. New Age likes their magnets. I guess that's their hobby. So. Sort of like some other people. I know. But yeah, that's pretty awesome. I like that a lot. So. Looks like, uh, I think it was the Dinobot Island episodes too, actually. Where uh, he was using this. I think Wheeljack outfitted a few of the Autobots with these. So they could get to the island. Because... Autobots all of a sudden couldn't fly after, you know, the first episodes. So, that's their accessories. Let's take a closer look at these. I, did, I didn't show it before, but obviously his wheels are magnets too. So, if you want to use them on Bumblebee, you can. But, let's take a look at them. And you know, we all knew these figures were going to be tiny, but you just never really realize how little they are until you get them in the hand. But I think this is a great looking little G1 Bumblebee mode. It looks sort of similar to the toy as well. So, uh, along with the cartoon. So, you got metallic blue paint on the windows that look great. Uh, the windshield wipers on mine, they are painted, but it's, it's a little bit sloppy. I mean, it's fine. But uh, clip jumpers are done much better. But, uh, yeah, nice molded detail for the hood there. As is part for the course, how it should look. Got some silver paint on the headlights there. Got the bumper picked out here. The wheels are pretty nice. They roll pretty fine. And uh, yeah, it looks good. This is a little bit plain on the back again. So, but you know, like I said, I may do that or may not. I don't know if I'll really care, to be perfectly honest. But I think he looks really good. So, club jumper here in his little, he was some kind of Porsche, I don't remember exactly which, but uh, looking pretty good and looks very similar to his scrunched up penny racer form from uh, the cartoon and the toy line. So, again, uh, metallic blue paint for all the windows looks really good on him. He's got a cool little spoiler here. Uh, not as much paint though. Uh, I kind of wish his headlights at least were maybe painted, but something I can fix if I decide to. Uh, but yeah, his windshield wipers, you can see, look a little cleaner than Bumblebee's do. But yeah, looking good. And there's all the arms and legs underneath. So, <laughs> no complaints at all about how these guys look in vehicle mode. And... They are teeny tiny, so to hammer that home, let's bring in a few size comparisons here. So, here they are with New Age's original Bumblebee Flipper, with the Netflix Hasbro Deluxe Class Bumblebee, Iron Factory Cliff Jumper, and Earthrise Cliff Jump Deluxe Cliff Jumper. So. <laughs> Teeny tiny. And for a couple of general size comparisons, with a fellow New Age car, with an Iron Factory car, with a die-cast Hot Wheel car. So, there you go. All right, so let's get these guys transformed. I'm going to do Cliff Jumper here because he has one very minor part that is completely lacking on Bumblebee, and I want to show that. Uh, if I feel like the review isn't too long, I'll do a reverse transformation for Bumblebee or something. So what you're going to do for both of them, though, everything else is exactly the same. Um, you're going to look at these tabs that take the front part to the, to the door here and just... Pull those free on both sides. And you can just kind of pull that up on this hinge right here. And you can see his hips there. And you've got the upper body and the lower body. So you can do it however you want in order as far as that goes. Uh, I like to do the upper body first. But just to give him a little more space, I'm going to go ahead and fold the legs down here. And you can go ahead and separate them. They tab here and here. But usually I've found I like doing the upper body first and getting it done. So first things first up here, take the spoiler part 
and move it up on this hinge and that's going to free up these hinges for you to move these entire panels right here and just rotate them all the way until the tires meet so then you can take his arms and rotate them out on that hinge and just straighten them up the way they're supposed to be and then take this panel right here fold it on that hinge repeat and you can go ahead and sort of form his torso here uh, nothing really tabs into place but everything kind of sits nestled together pretty good so works pretty well as far as that goes this is the one minor part I mentioned. You have to rotate this up on a clip jumper, and that's it. <laughs> so, when I said minor, I meant minor. And then you can bring this back part down on the hinge here, and it kind of helps hold everything into place there. So there you go. So, I'm going to rotate the waist before I forget to do it, because I always do that. Do you guys forget to rotate waist? I do. I do a lot. So, uh... Anyway, so we got the feet here. We've folded them down and split them. Next thing you're going to do is just rotate this whole front panel down on the ball joint here at this angle. And just get that down out of the way. Uh, now, there's this part can be a little finicky because there's just little parts. Like, you're probably, if you're not careful, you're going to pop his ankle free out of these ball joints. It's not a big deal, but, you know, obviously you do want to do that as little as possible to not sort of wear out the plastic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rotate these panels down onto the back of his legs. This is where they're meant to end up here. So next I'm going to take this and open this panel up a little bit like that. And if you just pull up on this, you're probably going to pop his ankle out of that ball socket. So what I found is best to do is just to kind of push it up with the wheel because the wheel rotates with it if I can do it with my fat fingers. <laughs> Case in point. Well, that's done. So you can go ahead and just pop it back on the ball joint, close up his foot, make sure his legs in the right direction. I think that's right. Let's try and do it right this time, guys. So, let me open that up. I don't know if this panel got in the way. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I believe that is what it was. And I'm not even following my own advice again. Push the wheel down. And that'll help rotate it up. And there you go. We'll make sure his hip part section is also folded down under his waist and there you go there's cliff jumper looking pretty sweet i'm gonna get bumblebee transformed and we'll take a closer look at them and their accessories for robot mode so here they are in their robot modes and i think they both look great let's go ahead and start looking at articulation and all the detail and let's get a good look at this head sculpt because it looks great. Painted to the nines, yellow, white, and blue. You know, the horns look great. The, the eyes look great. The facial expression is good. You know, the hexagonal or octagonal look of his face. Is that what you would call it, guys? I don't know how many sides there are. You know what I'm talking about, though. That's there. Looks good. My only complaint, and it's not even really a complaint, it's just something I find funny, is that from where his eyes are sculpted so far back in his head, it kind of looks like he has bags under his eyes at times. Do Cybertronians his dream of electric sheep? I don't know. Maybe. As far as the head articulation goes, yeah, you're just going to get, you can, can get 360 if you use the up here. Because you've got a big cut at the back of this ball joint. And that lets you go all the way up. Like so. Useful for when you want to throw the jetpack on him. And useful for Cliff Jumper if you want to put him in his classic sniper pose or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, other than that, no down or side to side. 
Uh, you know, this, uh, fake windshield, you know, these windows and stuff in, uh, the promo pictures originally, I wasn't really a big fan of how it looked, but in hand, I think it works really good personally. Um, you know, the paint definitely helps, so it's fine. I think it looks good. Your arms are on a hinge, so you can go down. This is all due to transformation, but you can go all the way down and up like that. Ball joint here, so you know the drill with all that. You can actually go backwards and forwards at the elbow due to uh, transformation, so there's that. And the wrists are on a ball joint, so you can have some wrist articulation. And he does have a bicep swivel. It's kind of hard to show just because of how little he is. But he actually does have a bicep swivel. So, pretty cool as far as that goes. Waist rotation, which you kind of already saw due to transformation. These are just on balls as well. You get that much movement at the actual hip ball joint there. You get a thigh cut for 360. And normally you're only going to get down to here as far as the knees go with this panel blocking it. So that's a little unfortunate. Uh, you can cheat and just move it over here to the side if you really need to bend his knees. And then you get a little more than 90 as far as that goes. And then you saw his ankles are on a ball joint. So you get all of that movement as far as your posability there. And that's pretty much it as far as his feet go. And you can do the splits and kick really far up and back. So lots of articulation. And uh, yeah, I think he cleans up pretty good. I mean, as good as any Bumblebee does. I mean, he cleans up as good as the MPs do. That's kind of how they look in a way. So, you know, I think it's good. We'll take a quick look at Cliff Jumper's detail. And love this head sculpt. It's This is G1 Cliff Jumper all the way through as far as this goes. I think it's perfect. So, that's really the only major notable difference. Obviously, this is a sculpted difference on this faux chest piece here. But, other than that, same articulation and everything you're going to get with Bumblebee as far as that goes. So, but looks good, in my opinion. So, let's uh, check them out with their accessories. Now, again... You can take that one piece off for Bumblebee if you want. But now that we've got him in robot mode, we can take the wheel off. And we can just put his jetpack there on. And if you want to have him jetting around, you can do that. And if you want to actually pose him as such, hey... Go for it. Bumblebee. The flight of the Bumblebee, right? And as far as his pistol goes, he can hold it fine in either hand. So, there you go. Definitely a little pew pew. Possibly the smallest in your collection if you big him up, right? As far as Cliff Jumper goes, He's going to hold his weapon perfectly fine. And again, if you want to sort of simulate him getting the drop on someone like that, hell yeah. So, that's pretty much all there is as far as that goes. I'm going to get you guys a pretty good amount of size comparisons because I really want to hammer home uh, just how little these guys really are. So, let's uh, make sure we got plenty of space here and I'll start bringing some in. I'll start with the obvious comparisons. New Age Flipper, 
the Hasbro Deluxe versions, and Iron Factory Clip Jumper. And yeah, definitely the smallest of the small. Here they are with some other New Age figures. So you can see how they stack up with their own brand. Here they are with some Magic Square Autobots. And maybe a little too small for you. Um, I'm probably still going to use them with these figures in my G1 display. But if they're too small for you, then I can understand that. With some other Iron Factories, including our usual suspect. With some various other brands, DX9 Cup, Unique Toys Brainstorm, Mechanic Studio, or Make Fans Toys, whatever you want to call them, tracks that they just released, and Transform Element Rat Trap. And finally, a few general size comparisons for you that I've used in the past. So, again, it's kind of hard to believe how little these guys are until you really have them in hand and things to compare them to. So that's going to do it for the review. Uh, as far as my final thoughts on New Age Herbie and Vanishing Point, uh, I'm a big fan of these figures, obviously. Uh, you know, I have a couple of minor qualms about them, but overall the positives far, far outweigh the negatives, in my opinion. Um, are they right for your collection as far as scale goes? I don't know. They may not be. Uh, hopefully the size comparisons that I showed you all will help you decide if you were on the fence on that, which way or the other. So, but even that aside, I think they're great fun figures. A uh, lot of fun posing them and just fun to play with in general. So definitely a recommendation for me. So that's going to do it. Questions, comments, hit us up. Let us know. Till next time, talk to you later.